Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> oh my gosh. I just made the best banana and ice cream. For those of you who want a healthy snack option, banana and ice cream is so good. What I've been doing differently is I've been using my food processor attachment to make the banana and ice cream and you can just use three ingredients and it comes out so much thicker, it doesn't melt as fast, and it just has this cookie dough-like consistency that is so good. So normally I use my Vitamix container to blend and make my banana and ice cream, but recently I've been using the food processor attachment and it's like next level. Mm. So good. What's also cool about this smoothie bowl or this nice cream bowl is that I grew these bananas and I grew these papayas. So I grew the fruit that I'm eating in this smoothie bowl and that's just everything. <laughs> Oh my gosh, can I also just say that Mufasa is so big today. I'm not sure if it's the rain or the humidity, but my gosh, my hair is giant today. <laughs> Aloha my friends, Christina here, and I'm so excited to dive into discussing conscious consumption or intake consciousness with you today. I've been wanting to make this video a long time, so I'm so excited to finally sit down and talk about this subject that I am so passionate about with you. I haven't turned on my TV since December of this past year. No movies, no Netflix, no news, no TV in general. I'm even more selective of the music I listen to. I've narrowed my circle of friends more than I ever have before. For those of you who've been following me a long time, you know that I have been a raw vegan for almost 18 years now, and I care immensely about what foods I put into my body. I have expanded that consciousness to becoming more mindful of everything I ingest and everything that occupies my time during the day and more. My intention with this video is to provide you with a sense of empowerment and to remind you that you are sovereign over your life and your choices. If you've watched any of my previous videos, then you will recognize that I use the phrase reconnect the disconnect quite often. And that is exactly what we're going to be doing today. I have become super passionate lately about conscious consumption in all its forms. For people that are going raw or vegan, it's usually all about the food, but I believe that it is about so much more than that. I've found oftentimes that people are aware of what foods they consume, but they don't pay much attention to the TV they watch, the music they listen to, or even the company they keep around them constantly. Something I've been paying super close attention to this year is how I can really create more peace and alignment within my life by simply being conscious of what I am ingesting daily. If you are what you eat, then you also are what you read, see, think, feel, and even who you surround yourself with. We are a culmination of the foods, elements, media, and people who compromise the time in our days. And our time is very much limited. How you spend your time matters. Something that I really want to start talking more about in my videos is how to practice more self-care in ways that evolve around food and also far beyond food. This healing journey is a complete awakening. It is a mind and body and spirit journey. And with so much happening in the world, I believe it is easier now than ever to be pulled away from the things that truly matter or that can actually bring you health and happiness. The precious relationship you have with yourself included. We live in a society that I believe aims to constantly disconnect us 
from who we are and the peace, the health, and the wellness that we are meant to have. I do believe that certain entities profit off of us being sick and tired, and there are entities that profit off of keeping us entrapped in different forms of media, information, or even entertainment. There is so much drama and trauma being circulated that is overwhelming for our systems, and there is so much information being spread around, it's easy to become overwhelmed. Do you even notice the effects of this in your body? Are you conscious of it? Do you even know when it's happening? You'd have to really be listening and you'd have to be in tune with your body. Sometimes it creates a dopamine hit in your body. Those dopamine hits add up in the day. Does it leave you energized or does it leave you exhausted? How are the things that you eat, see, watch, etc rewiring your nervous system on a daily basis? How are they rewiring your belief systems and even the essence of who you are? Instead of reconnecting us with the resources, tools, and lifestyle habits that create healing for us, I find that our culture and society aims to do the opposite. I believe in a sense that it leaves us feeling powerless to a certain degree. I say the word reconnect instead of connect because I think most of us have lost touch with who we are and what keeps us grounded and healthy. From my observations, not that many people know how to take care of themselves nowadays. Few know how to grow their own food or live sustainably, and those who do know how to live sustainably or grow their own food are considered to be very different or eccentric. I'm considered to be extreme or different just because I eat raw foods or fruits and vegetables for a living. Is that different or is that healthy? How did we get to the point in our society where eating fruits and vegetables is not the norm? If you're in my inner circle, we talk a lot about reconnecting the disconnect. My intention with this video is truly to provide you with a sense of empowerment and to remind you that you are sovereign over your life and your choices. And sometimes we just need examples of other people who are doing the same and we just need the confidence and the encouragement to be able to step out to do it for ourselves. Not many people think about rediscovering who they are later on in life. They think it's too late, whatever our false beliefs are. I believe that it's a blessing to be able to explore, grow, and align more daily. I'm gonna give you some clear examples for you to think about. The first example would be of someone who comes home from work on a Friday night. They're exhausted from the week and they just want to wind down and have a nice evening so that they can enjoy the weekend, right? <laughs> Instead of finding healthy ways for them to relax or to learn more about themselves, most of the time I found people want to give themselves a cheat day or reward themselves with something that they crave rather than something that might actually be good for them. I found that people almost like to convince themselves that they deserve a break or they deserve to break their own rules for what they have survived during the week. And maybe their reward would be a tub of ice cream, a steak dinner, alcohol, or maybe lots of cookies, <laughs> something. Maybe they would sit and binge watch a Netflix series so that they can escape and not think about their own life because they're unhappy with their life. I don't see that as a reward. I see that as an avoidance something that I believe would actually be a treat for your body and your mind would be to eat a nutritious plant-based meal or a salad or to sink into a relaxing bath, to journal, call a loved one, and then to get into bed early. So instead of someone evaluating their week and sinking into nourishment and maybe even thinking about how they can make their week ahead better, they are escaping and disconnecting from themselves and going into a place where they don't have to think about their life. They're literally using media as an escape, food as a stuffing mechanism. They're just 
drowning it all out. This is what I refer to as disconnect versus reconnect. And I am hoping that we can reconnect the disconnect. I'm hoping you can see what I'm talking about through that example. And here, I also think we can begin to see the difference between self-sabotaging behavior and also self-care. They are two very different things. One has a sense of powerlessness compared to the other, which has a sense of empowerment and peace and alignment. Which do you have more of in your life? Another example I could give you would be the friends or family that you allow to influence your daily routine. We all have those people in our lives who don't really support or encourage us when we want to make healthier choices. They might feel threatened because they want you to continue to drink or party or eat unhealthy foods with them, or maybe they just like to sit around and gossip and they want you to be a part of it. Ask yourself, do you feel depleted or exhausted after spending time with them? Are they a reflection of who you want to be? Are they sitting around all day procreating drama and negative talk? Or are they actually helping you to grow into a better version of yourself? Notice how you feel about yourself after having spent time with them or with certain people. If you feel like you have to sacrifice who you are to be with someone or to be around a certain group of people, I don't consider that to be a safe space. And it's okay to outgrow certain people, scenarios, or lifestyle habits. I have found that those who truly love you will embrace you always and will encourage you to be your best. Sometimes they might even want to grow with you. Come on. No. Come on, girl. Mm-hmm. Yum, yum. Yum, yum. I hope those examples were helpful to you and I hope that you are able to see how our health encompasses more than just our physical body, but also our mental and physical states as well. And those are impacted by our choices, um, our choices of what we ingest, who we surround ourselves with and more. It looks like it's about to start raining again, so I might have to wrap this up, but there are some questions I'd like to ask you and for you to journal about or consider. Are the movies you watch on TV or Netflix or any streaming source that you might watch, are they creating a sense of education, knowledge, or empowerment for you? Do they instill seeds of fear within you? Do they cause you to doubt yourself? Do you follow people or pages on social media that align with what you believe and with whom you want to become? Do these pages inspire you or are they just shameless follows? Do these pages inspire you to be better or do they deplete you with drama or possibly circulate even more trauma in your life? Here's another good one. <laughs> Does the music you listen to allow you to say mindless lyrics or things you would never say in real life? Or does the music help you relax or find peace or joy? I love listening to conscious music that makes me feel uplifted. There's such a difference and music absolutely affects your emotional state and how you interact with yourself and others in the day. Be conscious of what you are intaking and notice whether or not these medias have become an escape for you to disconnect from your daily life or whether these mediums that you intake allow you to return back to yourself or to reconnect back with yourself and provide you with a sense of more meaning and hope. Disconnect, reconnect. The intention is to reconnect the disconnect. Where are your safe spaces and how can you create more of them? I actually created a YouTube video months ago on how I create safe and healthy spaces for myself. Me creating a more solid intake consciousness was my next step in this journey for myself. <laughs> and can I just say, whoa, whoa, it has really empowered me and has helped me to step into the next version of myself. KB 11.0. 
I feel more confident and strong than I ever have in my entire life, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally as well. It's been a while since I created that other Safe Spaces video, so I guess my question would be, should I recreate the video on the things that I do to create safe spaces for myself? Let me know in the comments. When in doubt, reconnect back to yourself. Do the things you love to do. Don't let anyone or anything hold you back. Remember who you are. Journal. Find joy and appreciation in the small things and express gratitude whenever and wherever possible. A practice that I have been cultivating instead of watching TV while I eat or instead of looking at my phone while I eat is I've started eating outside with my food and have been intentionally being present with my meals while eating. This has really helped me to cultivate a deeper sense of appreciation and gratitude for my food when I eat and it's helped me to create more peace in my life. Think about it. How often do you actually take the time to sit down and enjoy your food? When we eat in a calm state, we get to experience improved digestion and more feelings of satisfaction. You don't realize how distracted by life and phones and more you get until you try this. Be present with your food and with your eating process with your intake consciousness. <laughs> For me, this is a practice of creating more wellness and inner peace in my life. And I think it's a powerful way to protect the peace in your life and even process your thoughts and emotions. It's taking life one step at a time, one moment at a time, and one delicious bite at a time. How we use our time and our love becomes our life. It adds up. Be conscious of the seeds you plant in your life. If you have liked this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button because there is only more goodness to come. Thank you all so much simply for watching and for listening and for allowing me to share what I'm passionate about with you and thank you for being on this journey with me. It means the world. Any and all important links that you might need are linked below for you in the description. If you're looking for raw vegan recipes, my app is listed below for you in the description. My app has more than 450 raw vegan recipes available for you at your fingertips, available on iTunes and Google Play. And there's tons of other resources in the description for you, so please check them out in the description below. I hope this topic inspires lots of good conversation and comments below, so I'll definitely be checking that out. Thank you all again so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Sending you my hugs and my love. Bye.